Hello YouTubers, Hammy Technoid here. And today we are in my little man cave repair area. And we're looking at the Harman Kardon CD491 that is mine. Uh, I bought this way back in 1984 when I was stationed in Korea. I uh, purchased it through the Army Air Force Exchange Service. And you know, if anybody out there is in the military and been overseas, you take advantage of those good prices in that catalog. You look at the prices. Now, I think this deck went for, um, retail price was around 800, 850 in that ballpark. And it's loaded with features, you know, but I didn't pay near that for the, from the Air Force. So yeah, I got blessed. Anyway, uh, what we're doing today is we're going to do some major calibrations alignments on this baby. I was uh, checking it out the other day and I just so happened out of curiosity to stick in the, uh, the Dolby Test Tone Tape here. This Dolby Test Tone Tape and uh, it was way off. My goodness it was way off. It wasn't even near the Dolby symbol there. It was like five decibels down, way off. So yeah, at that point I said, this guy needs calibrated and checked out something. So what we're going to do first, and this is preliminary checking first, whatever you do with the first thing you do with a cassette deck is check azimuth alignment. So what I've got is I've got an azimuth tape in there. I've got a, a reference azimuth tape that was recorded on a reference deck I have. And uh, I'm going to play that and we're going to align it to the uh, oscilloscope I've got here. And anybody that knows about oscilloscope alignment, it's a very accurate way of aligning the azimuth. What you do is you get the line to go sideways and not in a circle. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. Uh, first, let me put the camera on the tripod. Okay, I got the oscilloscope set up here. And uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to take my little screwdriver here. And I'm going to put it into the tiny little hole that's provided on the front of the deck right above the stop button. I got a picture of it I'm going to put up there so you can see it. Uh, too bad I can't have the camera going on both places at once, but uh, yeah, I only have one camera. Anyway, so what, I, what this only works when it's in the play because the head has to be up where you can get the screwdriver on it. So I'm putting it into play, okay, and now I turn on the oscilloscope there, okay, and now you see the Lissajou pattern. What I've done is I've taken the left right and put it into an XY mode on the oscilloscope and what it's doing it's making this Lissajou pattern and I'm going to put the screwdriver into the tiny little hole and yeah well as soon as I find a little tiny little hole okay and get it on the screw there and it takes a little doing where am I at okay I'm on the screw and now let me take it out of alignment there look at that now that's what happens when it's out of alignment. It makes a circle. So that means it's out of phase. Yeah, what you want to do is you want to adjust it in phase. And these adjustments are very, very tiny, very minuscule. Okay, and see it's bringing it back in and it wants to flip in and out. And if you go too far, it goes that way. So I went too far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the happy medium point right there. Okay, that's where it's going to be the happy medium point. And the fluctuations are due to the tape and the head path and all that. It's just never going to be perfect unless you have like uh, going at uh, seven and a half inches per second or something like that. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that is as good as it's going to get right there. And I'm just going to tweak it out. There you go. It's out. And then it's out again. Yeah, you see it's a very, very tiny adjustment spot. So I'm going to leave it right there. That's going to be good enough. And you see it fluctuates, but then it comes right back in. So yeah, that's as good as it gets for this deck right here. We have azimuth alignment. Now if I wanted to, I could go ahead and put some glue on there to uh, keep it st steady. But I'm not going to put glue because I've had bad experience with glue before. So now let's go to the next step of the calibration. Okay, the next stage of the calibration involves the test tape. The TAC MTT150. And I'm going to show you what I found out on HiFiEngine.com. Now, HiFiEngine.com, I'm giving them a shout out. They're not a sponsor, but I'm giving them a shout out anyway because I wouldn't have been able to find 
out what I needed to do without them. They are a very useful web page with information and all the stuff you need to know about your particular deck. If you're a person who are who is into calibrating and adjusting and making repairs. So yeah, uh, this is the tape that they recommend. Okay, and then there's a couple of points on the circuit board where you need to go in and put a meter and I've got my meter set up here and I gotta turn it on yet uh, and there's a couple adjustment points there if you see I'm looking right at them there right beside that the just below and to the right of that capacitor that bigger capacitor that you can see there and I'm gonna point at it with my little plastic there this these are the adjustments here these two right here okay the test points are TP501 and TP502 and the adjustment points are VR101 this one and VR102 okay and those are the ones that control the playback for the Dolby level and let me just turn on the meter here and get it situated it has to be in the AC and we need to let it settle down to zero volts okay which it will eventually it's just got to settle down to zero volts and I'm making adjustments with a little plastic screwdriver this is a screwdriver that came with this deck and it's the one that you're supposed to use to get in here and do your uh, Dolby level calibrations right here they it just fits perfect in these two little holes right here for calibrating but it also works well on the uh, circuit board and my advice is if you're doing any adjustments on a circuit board and, and there's potential for you to drop the screwdriver you better have a plastic one because if it drops on the circuit board and it's metal and it shorts out a couple points you could damage your machine beyond repair it beyond reasonable repair you know things could go up in smoke popping fuses blowing transistors all that all that nasty stuff that happens to electronics so anyway what the page on Hi-Fi Engine said to do was to connect the meter up to TP501 and 502, then play the Dolby test tone tape into the meter and make adjustments on VR101 and VR102. Well, to save time, I've already done the adjustment on uh, channel, the left channel. I've already done the adjustment on the left channel and we're going to do the right channel now so let's put the tape this this is the dolby test tone tape let's put the dolby test tone tape into play mode okay there it goes and look how convenient it is once the voltage is adjusted right like i said i've already done the left channel it's right up there with the dolby symbol right up there okay and you can see that the right channel is below all right and the meter reads 0.46 okay now we got to get that to 0.58 and by doing that let me move the camera to my other hand I'm grabbing the screwdriver I'm gonna take the screwdriver I'm gonna put it in here on VR502 as I can see the shadow dang it the shadow is bad okay I'm on VR502 you have to take my word for it now let me do an adjustment here this is so awkward I can barely see what I'm doing there we are now I'm turning it up turning it up 0.4 you're almost to 0.5 okay now we need to get it up to 0 0.58 0 0.58 okay a little high a little high you can see it's fluctuating from the tape playing I may not be able to get it to 0.58 exactly. Let's see, there's point, ooh, 0.58. Let's see, right there. I'd rather have it a little over than a little under. Okay, that looks satisfactory to me. I'm gonna leave, mm, yeah, that, it's fluctuating in the area there. Okay, let's leave it there. And now look, both of them are lined up with the Dolby symbol. Isn't that cool? That is just way cool, okay? So thank you Hi-Fi Engine, and thank you Test Tape, <laughs> and thank you YouTubers for watching.
for watching me uh, calibrate this CD491, this fantastic, fabulous deck that I've had since 1984. And if you consider, consider subscribing, like the button, you know, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, Hammy Technoid says, see you later.